Hello everyone, and welcome to Rogue Lab in Slovenia, Parallel Giant Slalom, number two of the 2013-14 uh, Snowboard World Cup Tour. As you can see, it's a pretty foggy day, pretty damp, wet day, far from ideal conditions. Well, here's what it could have looked like if the weather was playing a little bit fairer with us. Beautiful part of the world in northeastern Slovenia, Rogla. Resort that uh, opened in 1975. First onto the uh, scene on the World Cup Tour last season with uh, parallel giant slalom. Fishnaller, the winner in the men's last year, took a good shape at the women, in, the winner, to beg your pardon, in the women's event. Well, as you can see, not a lot of snow around at the moment. Top elevation here in uh, Rogla, just 1,517 meters. So the wax technicians will be hard at work in these conditions. I can see the snow getting a little brown. This, when it's warm like this, the, the, the dirt and the mud starts to make its way up to the surface, and that just means the waxing of the boards a little bit harder. Absolutely critical on a day like today. Well, it's the two-run format, the rerun format today, so athletes get a chance to race on both the red and the blue courses. And we're going to have all the action right the way through to the finals. I'm Ian Finley in the commentary box for this World Cup. Looking forward to bringing you some fantastic alpine snowboard racing. Well, the Slovenian fans always... Out in force, they'll be cheering on Zan Kazir. See how he gets on later today. As you can see at 5 degrees the temperature. Compact snow, fog, a little bit of wind. There's rain as well. If you were to pick conditions to race in, these wouldn't be it. Great team in Slovenia. Working on the track. Just under 1500 meters, the start altitude. 453 meters long with a vertical drop of 121 meters and that course crew are going to be hard at work throughout this race the umbrellas are not a common thing that you see in ski or snowboard competition on the various world cup tours but much needed today as are the storm coats as well although it's five degrees i think that's uh we Used to racing in temperatures as low as minus 15, but these days when it's damp like this, the rain's falling, it can feel a lot worse. We'll get a look at the start list. Anka Karstens will be in the first heat. Ilyokina, her challenger. And then the next eight athletes that will be vying for places in the quarterfinals. So it'll be the First leg of the women's event up first. Athletes just going through their final warm-up routines. Getting ready to start the competition. We raced in uh, Parallel GS in Carreza, Italy. That was back in uh, December 2013. Patricia Kumar, the winner there. Takeuchi was in second for Japan. Took a shave at third for Russia. The only PGS we've had so far in the 2013-14 season. We'll see uh, took a shaver in the second heat. Patricia Kumar in heat number four up against the legend Claudia Riegler. First athletes getting lined up in the start gate now in Rogler to kick off this parallel giant slalom at World Cup. Anka Karstens of Germany will be up first against Ilyukina of Russia. Just uh, relaxing under the umbrella. Patricia Kumar there. She wore the yellow bib as the tour leader. 
Ilya Kina wearing a bib one. Bib 21. That's uh, Anka Carstens. Do beg your pardon, wearing bib one. Qualified in 16th place, so the slowest of the qualifiers. But Anka Carstens up first on the blue course. Up against the top qualifier, Ilya Kina. Qualified in first place. She'll be on the red course. So heat number one moments away. We'll get the countdown. And the board drops. So underway with the first heat here in Rogla. Women's eight finals. And our first chance to take a look at this course set. These course conditions will be about as good as they get underfoot for these athletes. This course is going to get a little rutted, a little bumpy. It's going to chop up in these warm conditions. That precipitation falling from the sky as well. Very little between the athletes at the moment. The Russian in trouble. Oh, just running a little wide. And Anka Carsten staying calm. And Carstens comes across the line by... Point six, so that is a healthy advantage to take into the second leg. Ilyukina struggling a little bit in places. The weight being thrown back onto the heel, into the soft snow, having to fight to stay on the line. So Anka Carstens will make her way back to the top. And will take point six. Of a second advantage into the second run. We move on to heat number two. In a message on the red course. Ekaterina took a shaver on the blue. Message qualified in eighth, took a shaver in ninth. So on paper, very little to separate between these two athletes. This should be a super close race. Athletes come out of the start, try and glide the board, then settle into the rhythm. Nothing between them at the moment. And took a shaver in a spot of trouble. She had her hands down on the snow. And that's given meshing. A slight advantage to good shaver. Struggling particularly on the toe edge. She's working hard getting back into this race. And now Tugashiva starts to really close the gap, but Meshing takes it by 0.11, just over a tenth of a second. All to play for on the second leg. Here's where Tugashiva had all sorts of problems, doing very well to get back upright and into the stay in touch in the race and she did close that gap nicely towards the end of run number one so heat number three Esther Ladachka of the Czech Republic wearing bib 14 she's on the red course the youngster up against Isabella Labuek Board drops underway with heat number three. Ladechka on the red course. Labuk on the blue. Call it the blue. The gates are green, but we normally go red and blue. That's a good start for the Czech athlete. The fog, to me, looks like it's worsening. And the German is out of the race here. So the penalty time. If you come out of the course, 1.46 seconds. So that is the advantage that Ladechka is going to have. Taking it about going into run at number two. German back on the course will complete it as Ladechka crosses the line. A good thing to do for the Germans, just get back on the course, ride out the last few gates, just get that feel of the board in these conditions. It all helps. Here's where the German makes a mistake, trapped on the heel edge, can't get. That transition onto the toe edge for the new turn to carve it out. And the Czech rider with a very big advantage going into run two. So Patricia Kuma 
will be on the red course here. The winner, Ima Kereza, up against Claudia Riegler of Austria on the blue. Riegler's ridden in every type of condition you can imagine. She's raced in it. Every condition you can imagine as well. Puma standing nice and tall, moving well with the lower body, generating that speed on the top section. Now the turns start to lengthen, moving more across the hill. In between the riders at the moment, if anything, Riegler with the slight advantage. Patricia Kuma coming back into this one as Kuma got in front. I think she has, but it's very close. As we approach the final gate, Kuma takes it by 0.23. So Patricia Kuma will take that advantage into run number two. See already just how soft the snow is. It's so hard to stay on that edge Cl cleanly arc out these turns to build the speed up heat number five Julia Dumovitz of Austria So Dumovic on red, stop fits of Poland on the blue course. Red course for me has been the slightly stronger course so far, the slightly quicker course, but of course all these athletes do switch tracks. It does make it uh, nice and fair for everyone, very little here. Split the riders as Dumovitz with the advantage though. And Julia Dumovitz of Austria doing a nice job here. It's a solid turn. Just a little stumble there and she's lost the advantage. Uh, Dumovitz does hold on though. 0.33 the advantage. But it could have been a little bigger. A few mistakes towards the bottom of the run. And Dumovitz will have an advantage going into run two, but I think that could have been north of half a second. Just watch Dumovitz here. There's a stumble on the toe edge. Does it get transition cleanly onto the heel edge? Maybe lost a couple of tenths of a second. So heat number six, Selina Jörg of Germany. Qualified in sixth place. She's on... The red course, Ekaterina Katomenskova. Katomenskova, I should say, on the blue. Easy to spot, Katomenskova. And those uh, pink trousers. And for the coaches at the side of the hill filming these runs. And make out the athletes in the fog. Thankfully, it's uh, not uh, got any worse yet. Fingers crossed it stays as it is. Well, I'd like it to get better, but these, this run, of course, in the trees, as you can see, just helps provide a little bit more definition for the athletes as Selina Jörg of Germany crosses the line, takes it by half a second. Pretty healthy margin to take into the second run. So quite a lot of work for... Katomenskova to do on the second run. So the athletes will make their way back to the top under an umbrella, or they'll hopefully have a dry jacket with one of the coaches at the bottom. So heat number seven. Takeuchi of Japan on the blue course. Cobra of Germany on the red. Takeuchi, of course, second in Kereza back in December. Red course with the tiniest of advantages in the early exchanges here in Rogla.
Right, half a gate advantage. Takeuchi is an experienced athlete. We've got to write it down. Cobra's down and Takeuchi can just ride this one down to the finish. She'll take the maximum 1.46 through to the next round. The second run, I should say. Emily Cobra down there and she's heading towards the safety net. Hope she's okay and can take to the start here. She just can't make that. New turn into the net to get the side as she's bashed her shoulder off the pole. And that can uh, hurt. They're pretty solid, those things, but good to see her moving around and just sort those bindings out. Get ready for the second run. Well, one heat to go. It's Marion Kreiner. Qualified in second place. She's on the red course. Natalia Sobaleva of Russia qualified in 15th on the blue. So on paper, Kreiner the favourite. Doesn't always play out that way. Sobaleva still in touch here, but Kreiner goes her way around these gates and Kreiner doing a nice job here. Sobaleva having to take some risk to stay in touch, running a deeper, straighter line and it hasn't paid off. Big mistake from the Russian. And Marion Kreiner knows she'll have this one in the bag. Sobolyeva gets herself back upright, point in the right direction, but will have to overturn 1.46 on the second run if she wants to move into the quarterfinals. So Marion Kreiner with that a healthy advantage to round off run number one for the women in the eighth finals. Here's the mistake of Sobolyeva. So the men will be up next with their first run in the eighth finals. Just a quick chance for the course team here to clear the track as best they can. We've got to look at the lineup in these eighth finals. Winter Koffler, the winner of the opening round. Not through in the top 16, so a bit of a surprise to see the winner in Carreza, not in these finals. San Kazir of Slovenia, second in Carreza. He will go in heat number six, but heat number one, Lucas Matthews of Austria on the red. Simon Schoch of Switzerland on the blue. Matt is the top qualifier. So on the red course first. Lots to cheer about for the Slovenian fans in the finish. Four Slovenian men through in the top 16. The Austrian fans have made their way to this part of the world. Support on their favourites. Not too far away from our, from the Austrian border, of course. The city of Graz in uh, southern Austria is just 117 kilometres away. Lovely city as well. I think it's got a famous clock tower, if I recall. Spent some time there a long, long time ago. Just uh, 52 kilometers away here from Maribor, a resort that hosts Alpine Ski World Cup. So the men's finals moments away. Matt is on red, shock on blue. Top qualifier against the slowest man on paper in the top 16. Two 
Good start for Shock of Switzerland on the blue course. But now Mattis starts to come back into it. If anything, the fog's thickening ever so slightly at the top of the course. But Mattis with a healthy looking advantage here, generating some nice angles, working hard on the board. And Mathis is going to carry a nice advantage into the second run. 0.71, nearly three quarters of a second. And Mathis taking that form from qualifying into finals today. Impressive riding from the Austrian. Started the season with a third place in Carreza. So there'll be a lot of noise now. Rock Margaret representing Slovenia, qualified in eighth place. Up against Stanislav Adetkov of Russia. Passionate fans here in Slovenia. This is the first Slovenian man that we'll see. First of four. Rock Flander made it through, as did Zan Kuzir. And Tim Masnik qualified through in 10th. He'll go in heat number seven. And there's the Margaret fan club. He'll be on the red course. Detkov on the blue. Margaret fifth. Fourth, I should say, in the opening round of the tour. As the gate repairs are done. Sometimes those flags just become separated from the poles. Just takes a little bit of time to sort them back out. In these conditions as well, sometimes the gates can pop out in the soft snow. They have salted the snow as well just to try and Ensure it's pretty solid underfoot. So Margaret on red. Detkov on blue. First of the Slovenian men in action. And I can hear the fans cheering from the finish line. And Margaret will hear them as well. Detkov taking uh, some risk, if anything, he's slightly ahead, that's a nice turn from Detkov, looking very smooth, arcing these turns out cleanly, looking quite a rounded line, it's not always the fastest line, it looks good, but Margic still nicely in touch, and if anything, just getting a fraction ahead, Margic takes it by 0.25 quarter of a second, so going to plan so far for Rock Margic. He'll take a quarter of a second advantage into run number two. Detkov having to put his hand on the snow for a little bit of balance as well. It's usually not a great sign. A lot of wind in the finish area as well. Everyone putting in a big shift to get this competition underway. Everything's just that little bit tougher. In these conditions, often you have problems with the timing gear as well when it's damp like this. Always got to be checking the cables. The sponsorship banners can be blowing around as we move on to heat number three. Promega of Austria. On the red course, up against Haldi of Switzerland on the blue. It's always pretty even until this part of the course, and once it gets a little steeper, that's where I think the red course is just a fraction uh, quicker at the moment, but it will even out. Haldi in touch here. 
And Promega is going to have some work to do on the second leg. The Austrian point 7-2 behind. So Roland Haldi of Switzerland will take 0.72 advantage. A couple of mistakes in the run from Promega. Big stumble there. Just a couple of gates before the finish line. A real chance for Roland Haldi to progress into the next round. So heat number four, Sylvain Dufour, qualified in fourth place, will be on the red course. Yoshioka. Of Japan on the blue. More trouble with that gate. I think it's the same gate as last time. You've got to get that flag over the pole and then there's usually some Velcro at the bottom of the flag that you can wrap around. You think you've done it tightly but then these world-class athletes blast through these gates and just could rip the flags off in a second so we've got the okay Dufo on the red Yoshioka on the blue he glide out of the start gate and then Pretty small moves the first three or four turns, then of course starts to really challenge you. Not the steepest that we have on the World Cup Tour, but a great venue. First appeared on the circuit last season. Dufour with quite a big advantage here, and the Frenchman can see the finish line. And Sylvain Dufour takes it by over a second. 1.14. So Sylvain Dufour in prime position now to qualify for the quarterfinals. Another gate popping off. A flag popping off, I should say. The gate stays in. Some days that's just the way it goes. Every flag looks like it's popping off on every single run. Does mean the course workers are kept very, very busy. Next of the Slovenians, Rock Flander will be on the red course. Rock Flander on the blue. Do beg your pardon, Patrick Busler on the red. Flander qualified in 14th, Bussler qualified through in third place, but Flander just a little behind the German Patrick Bussler on the red course. And now Rock Flander with some nice turns onto the steeper section, carried his speed very well indeed. And Rock Flander is getting back in touch here. If anything, he's slightly ahead. Rock Flander comes across the line. Takes it by six hundredths of a second. And that'll give him a lot of confidence because most of the wins that we've seen so far have come on the red course. Flander carrying tiniest of advantages into run two. Knowing he's on the red course might just give him that extra little bit of confidence. Heat number six, Zhang Kajir, second in the opening round. Up against Andre Sobolev. Kazir on the blue, Sobolev on the red. Kazir qualified through in 11th, Sobolev in sixth. Kazir will be buoyed by the performance of his teammate Flander on the blue course. Just one heat before him. The good times are there on the blue course. Maybe you have to work just that little bit harder to find them, but it is possible. 
And then Mark Zankuzir making a good stab of it here. Sobolev still in touch as well, but around the final turn, Kuzir by nine hundredths of a second. So the two Slovenians in the last two heats have been victorious on leg one, but by pretty small margins. So whilst the fans make some noise now. Still quite a lot of work to do for the Slovenians. And that advantage out of the start gate on the second leg will be gone in the blink of an eye. Heat number seven, Tim Masnik of Slovenia on blue. Benjamin Karl of Austria on the red. Karl was fifth in the opening round in Kereza. Benjamin Carl slightly quicker out of the start gate. Tim Masnik. Still very much in this race though. See, oh, Masnik with a big mistake. He's run very wide. And that is... Oh, and Benjamin Carl's run wide as well. So all sorts of drama in heat number seven. Thought the Slovenian might have thrown it away, but in the end he comes across the line and takes it by five hundredths of a second. Right after the mistake that Masnik made, Benjamin Karl with a big mistake of his own. Let's watch Masnik here on the heel edge, just cranks it over a little too much. A lot of the speed gone, right as he does that. Benjamin Karl. I think the same mistake on the red course. So two big mistakes in heat number seven. But Masnik, five hundredths of a second advantage going into run number two. Last of the men's heats. Vic Wild of Russia up against Bergman of Germany. Vic Wild on the red course. Bergman on the blue. Vic Wild second place qualifier. So got the form from qualifying. Can he carry it through into the head-to-head -head racing? Bergman right in touch here. Big Wild just running a little wide, but he's hanging on. And this is going to be very close across the line. Bergman by seven hundredths of a second. So Vic Wild with seven hundredths to overturn on the second run. So run number one all complete for the men and it'll be a run that two for the women coming up in a few moments time and that will determine our quarter-final lineups there's Ladeska she looked good in her first run Still a long way to go in this competition. Tough for the athletes today. Well, the weather hasn't really got any worse, so that is something. The athletes are lined up for the start of run number two. Anka Carstens will be on the red course. Ilyukina on the blue. So 
So Carsten's with the advantage. Just over half a second. And that's what 0.6 looks like. It's enough to get Anker Carsten's. Bit of a lead on the red course. Little Yukina has got to take some risk here to get into the quarterfinals. And she has closed that gap nicely. So Carsten's in a little bit of trouble. Oh, and Ilyukina's down. Oh, and that's it. Anka Carsten's will just ride this one through to the finish and into the quarterfinals. Takes it by over two seconds in the end, and Anka Carsten's delighted to be through to the quarterfinals. She'll go into the first of the women's quarterfinals. And then she'll be up against either Ina Messi or Tugut Shaver. They'll be racing in the next of these heats. There's the mistake of Ilyukina. She had, did take some risk on the top section to try and close the gap. She did manage to close the gap, but struggled to hold it all together. So took a shave up, up against Ina Mesic. Took a shave up, who won here last year on the red course. Point one at one behind. Mesic of Austria on the blue course. So Mesic carried. Point one one into the second leg and. Still got a slight advantage as took it Shaver just running late in the line. It's cost her a fraction more time. The message looks focused, looks dialed into this course. And she's still just ahead here. Ina Message of Austria crosses the line and into the quarterfinals. No repeat victory for Ekaterina took it Shaver. Last year's winner out in the eighth final stage of today's event. Heat number three, Esther Ledechka looks good in her first run. She's on the blue course with a maximum advantage over the German Isabella Labuk. 1.46 and Ledechka is off like a rocket here. Definitely getting a little worse at the top of the course. But they check. An athlete has got a big advantage. Moving well. Looking nice and dynamic. Surely no way back into this one for the German. Unless we see a mistake from Ledechka, which isn't going to happen at this stage. There's the Ledechka through. 2.56. Very comfortable in the end for the young Czech athlete. Powering through each of the turns. Ledesh gets through into the quarterfinals. Not showing much emotion yet, still a lot of riding to go in this competition. Back to heat number four, Patricia Kummer of Switzerland up against Claudia Riegler. Kummer on the blue, Riegler on the red. Kummer with the advantage, 0.23. Seen that Riegler claw that back in the past. And Patricia Kummer who won the opening round in Careza. Holding off the challenge of the Austrians so far. Anything she's built on that advantage. Gap maybe growing to 
Just about half a second at this stage. Running a little wide there though, Patrizia Kuma. And now the Swiss start. So that's the power from for home. Just two gates to go. Patrizia Kuma into the quarterfinals. 0.63. She'll go up against Esther Ledechka. Young rising star of this sport from the Czech Republic. So in the first two quarterfinal lineups are confirmed. Quarterfinal one, Ina Mesic up against Anka Karstens. And then Esther Ledechka up against Patricia Kumar. Four heats to go. Dumovitz of Austria will be going in heat number five. So Dumovic of Austria up against Stockfish of Poland. Dumovic 0.33 ahead. Stockfish with a lot of work to do. And Dumovic looking strong here. Pulling ahead on this second run. Wanting that place in the quarterfinals. Hasn't put a foot wrong so far. Just trapped a little on the right foot. Dumovic's regular foot right and left foot forward. And she's going to take this one quite comfortably in the end. Dumovic by three quarters of a second rides into the quarterfinals. She'll move into quarterfinal number three. So Dumovic now has to go back to the top, prepare for the quarterfinals. Doesn't know who she's racing yet. We'll work that out after this heat. There's Katamenskova of Russia. Katamenskova on the red course. Selina Jörg of Germany on the blue. Half a second. The difference on run number one. Which went the way of Selina Jörg. The slip crew all lined up at the side of the course. They'll give the course a quick slide after the women's second run ahead of the men's. I think the rain's got a little bit heavier in the start area as well. So still waiting for the OK from the starter to get heat number six underway. There we go, we're ready for heat number six. Selina Jörg on blue, Katomanchkova on red. Half a second. That's what the Russian has to claw back. Sometimes it's demoralizing when you see your opponent get that head start, but some athletes like chasing, they like clo closing that gap down. It can fire them up more, it can motivate them to take that little bit extra risk. And the Russian certainly has closed the gap slightly. Selina Jörg still in control of heat number six. Oh, and Katomeshkova runs very wide and gets spat out the course. So Selina Jörg is going to come through, take it. She moves into quarterfinal number three. Where Yulia Dumovic will be waiting. So Selena Jörg the winner. Quarter final three for her.
Heat number seven, Takeuchi of Japan is on the red course. Emily Kober of Germany on the blue. Problems on run one for Kober. Takeuchi with a big, big lead already. Of course, because of that advantage from run number one. So she can just stay within herself here, not make any mistakes. She knows that she's got the pace to hold off Emily Coburn, who's throwing everything at this heat. Takeuchi slowing up slightly, and Emily Kober coming back into this one. Can Kober spring a surprise? Oh, she's left it just a little bit too late. Too much work to do for the German, and Takeuchi just hangs on by point three eight in the end. See those ruts forming now. So hard to keep that contact with the snow. This could look like a bobsleigh track by the end of proceedings today. Although the uh, slip crew, the volunteers here in Rogue Level do as good a job as they can to keep the course as clean as possible. Keep it as fair for all of the athletes. So last of the eight finals for the women, Marion Kreiner on the blue course up against Natalia Sobolyeva. Kreiner with the maximum 1.46 advantage. She was the 2009 world champion in this discipline. These worlds held in Gangwon in Korea. Jason Kumar was third there. And Marion Kreiner. Comfortable here. Not being challenged by Sobolyeva. And Kreiner rounds off the lineup for the quarterfinals. She takes heat number eight and moves into quarterfinal number four. Just that little fist bump. Job done. Still a long way to go. We've got our eight athletes that are in the women's quarterfinals. Marion Kreiner confirmed as the winner. She'll go up against... Takeuchi of Japan. And we'll see the lineup. Carstens against Message. Ladeshka against Kumar. Jurg against Dumovitz. Kreiner against Takeuchi. We turn our attention now back to the men's. Eight finals, it's run two. There's Rock Margulich. He'll be in the heat number two, but up first it's Lucas Mathis and Simon Schoch. Mathis, the top qualifier on the blue course, 0.71 his advantage over the Swiss racer. Seven one can feel like a long time when you're waiting in the start gate, but once the race is on, it can uh, disappear. That, that advantage can be clawed back. The map is just running a little wide on the blue course. It's a large shock to get back into this one. Some gates clattered into the flags being ripped off, and Swiss athlete shock coming back into it. Mathis has got to hold on here though, that's what he's going to do. Lucas Mathis takes it, 0.36 in the end. Schoch did close the gap, but not by enough. So Lucas Mathis, the first man into the quarterfinals for the men.
So a nice long wait for Mathis. Now he can relax, try and dry off slightly, stay warm. Sensible teams bring a tent to the start in these conditions. So that's what I would do. The weather's not deterred the Slovenian fans who are coming out today, though, and they're here to support four Slovenian men in these eight finals. Rock Margot up first. 0.25, his advantage. Margot will be up on the blue course. So Margaret on the blue, Depkov on the red. Quarter of a second, all Margaret had to play with. See that loose, wet snow getting chucked up in the air on each of the turns. Margaret's building on the advantage here. Depkov trying to stay. In the contest, he runs wide there. That's going to cause the gap to grow. And the Russian Detkov out of the race. Margot through into the quarterfinals. He'll go up against Lucas Mathis. <laughs> Slow mo of Stanislav Detkov. And pushed into the soft snow, and once you're in that soft snow, it's so hard to get back onto the line. Margot's the winner. Lucas Mathis awaits in quarterfinal one. Romega on blue, Roland Haldi on red, 0.72, the advantage for Haldi and Promega is going to have to throw maximum effort at this one, quite a big deficit to try and overturn, Promega, experienced athlete, Just slowly clawing it back and Getting in touch with the Swiss rider. He's just made a couple of mistakes. Runs wide again. The brakes are on. Oh, and that's going to allow Promega to get back in front. Promega comes through and takes it by over a second. What a performance on run two from uh, Promega of Austria. Haldi with some mistakes on the bottom half of the course. Struggled on the heel edge. And Promega overturning a big deficit. And he goes into quarterfinal number two. Makes his way quickly out of the finish area. As we jump back to the start, no hanging about today. Sylvain Dufour there wearing bib 13 on the blue course. has got over a second of an advantage of a... Yoshioka. So Dufa on blue, Yoshioka on red. And Dufa, experienced now, will be quite happy to have a full second, or over a second, to play with. Smooth turns from the Frenchman on the top section. Through this flat section, then it gets a little steeper towards the bottom, but not the steepest hill we race on. And Sylvan Dupur throwing down some nice arc turns here on the blue course on the left of your screen. Dufour comes through and takes it comfortably by over two seconds. Quarter final number two for him. Textbook. Parallel giant slalom from Silva and Dufour. Had the big 
Advantage going into the second run. Didn't take too much risk. Rode a nice high, clean line. So the noise levels will go up a fraction. Rock Flander of Slovenia up next in heat number five. Just six hundredths of a second his advantage over Patrick Busler. Flander on the red, Busler on the blue. This is effectively a one run race. Six hundredths of a second, we'll see the boards drop almost identical times. It's like having no advantage. So it's all down to this second run here. Rock Flander on the red course and they are side by side, neck and neck at the moment. It's been the blue course which has been running a little better so far in these second runs. Rock Flander knows this hill well, knows these snow conditions. The lower altitudes, it often can be like this. And this one going right down to the line. Rock Flander dives for the line, takes it by 0.23 in the end. And Patrick Busler qualified in third place. Out of the race, the eighth final stage. Great riding from Rock Flander. So Flander goes into quarterfinal number three. We've got the possibility of an all Slovenian quarterfinal, but it all depends on what Tim Masnik can do. He's up against Benjamin Carl. Apologies, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's Sobolev against Kozir. Still a possibility of an all Slovenian quarter final though. So Kozir with nine hundredths of a second advantage over the Russian Andrei Sobolev. Kozir second in the opening round of the PGS Tour in Carreza, Italy is built. A slight lead over the Russian. Just nine hundreds to play with. Next to nothing. And it's still anyone's race as we're just about six or seven gates from home. They're diving towards the line. Who's going to take it? Oh, it is Zan Kozir. Zan Kozir, next to nothing between the two athletes over the two runs. Kozir progresses through to the quarterfinals. So it will be an all Slovenian quarterfinal number three. Rock Flander against Zan Kozir. The margins are small in this sport. Kozir the winner. And two heats the GOAT. So heat number seven, Tim Masnick has just five hundredths of a second advantage over Benjamin Carl. Carl, the 2013 world champion in PGS. Those worlds held in Stoneham in Canada. We head to Austria next season for the world championships. Of course, there's a big event coming up in just... Less than a month's time in Sochi. The Winter Olympic Games parallel slalom part of the program there as well. So Tim Masnick up against Benjamin Carl. Nothing between them. Benjamin Carl on the blue course. Masnick on the red. And the world champion needs to draw on some of that form and experience he's had in the past. Fifth place in the opening round of the tour, but Carl's ran a fraction wide, and that's opened an opportunity up for Masnik. He's got himself just in front here, I think. 
down to the line. Masnick takes it by 0.37. Tim Masnick knocks out the current world champion, Benjamin Carl. And that has sent the Slovenian fans into raptures in the finish area. All four Slovenian men that had made it through to these finals are through to the quarterfinals. So one heat to go. A bit wild there. Wearing bib nine, qualified in second place. Bronze medalist at those worlds last season. Seven hundredths of a second behind Alexander Bergman of Germany. Vic Wilde will not be phased by that. It's just tidiest of margins. Just not quite ready for this final heat of the eight finals. So a few last minute repairs going on. And we're underway with the last heat in the men's eight finals. Vic Wilde on the blue course. Bergman on the red. Now Vic Wilde just bursting out of the fog with tiniest of advantages here. And the Russian looks up for this one. Working hard, edge to edge. The German still in the contest though runs wide and puts the brakes on and that's handed it to Vic Wilde so the Russian progresses into quarterfinal number four 2.38 the advantage Bergman just not able to stay balanced on the board on that heel edge. Pushed wide into the soft snow. All the speed gone. Same thing happened to me, man. I got lucky. It's a wild through to the quarterfinals. He'll be up against Tim Masnick. As the slip crew get to work here. What a final lineups. Margic against Matis, Dufour against Promegger. Then the all Slovenian quarter final. Kozir against Flander. Does mean that there'll be one Slovenian in the semi finals at least. Masnik against Wild, the last of the men's quarter finals. That'll be coming up a bit later. It's now time for the women's quarterfinals. Meshik up first against Anka Karstens. So everything ready to kick off these quarterfinals. Ina Meshik of Austria on the blue course. Anka Karstens on the red. Run at number one. So the Austrian Meshik just with her nose in front in the early exchanges on run one as Anka Carstens is in trouble. Carstens is out of the course, so unless she Hikes back in. It is going to be the maximum of advantages that Meshik will take into run number two. 1.46. Ina Meshik crosses the line. She's ready for run two. Carstens does complete the course, but we'll have a lot of work to do on run at number two. Sensible riding for Meshik. Didn't look phased, just important things stay in touch on run number one. 
You can't win it on the first run, but you can make your job an awful lot harder. Oh, it is absolutely pouring it down in the start here. These athletes are getting drenched in the start. Patricia Kumar on the blue course up against Esther Ledechka on the red. And Ledechka looked really strong in her first round, the eight finals. Up against Kumar, who won the opening round of the tour. She wears that yellow bib. Ledechka staying in touch with Patricia Kumar here. Kumar just starts to step on the gas pedal slightly. Ledechka running a fraction wide. Now about half a gate behind. And, and it's the Swiss rider, Patricia Kumar, that's going to take the advantage into run number two. Ledechka points 7 2 behind. So that is going to test the young Czech athlete. So Ledecka with a big challenge ahead on run number two. It's all smiles from Patricia Kumar for now. So Dumovic up against York, quarterfinal number three. Dumovic on the red, York on the blue. So we're underway. Heat number three, quarterfinal number three. Run one. Dumovic with the advantage over the top few gates. And Dumovic holding on here. Jörg getting back into it though. Selena Jörg. Oh, just as I say that, big mistake from Selena Jörg. And if Dumovic can stay on her feet, she'll carry. That 1.46 of a second advantage into the second run. So Dumovic takes it. Big mistake from Jörg. Still hasn't crossed the line. It won't matter when she does. She just rides it out to the bottom. Certainly, to my eye, at least, thicker fog now on the bottom half of the course. Which is a, it's a real shame for the spectators in the finish. They want to be able to see the racing. I do love this head-to-head -head racing, as do the fans in the finish as well, of course. And one thing's for sure, they will keep making a lot of noise. It's a great atmosphere in the finish, despite the weather. So quarterfinal number four, Marion Kreiner, 2009 world champion on the blue. Takeuchi on the red. Two experienced athletes now battling in the last of the women's quarterfinals. Nothing to separate them through the top few turns. In these conditions, you just have to rely on the touch and feel of the snow. Listening as well, what sounds of the snow is the snow making? You add it all together to make the decisions. The Tactical decisions you'll make on the line, when to tighten the line up, when to run it a little more wide and across the line. And Takeuchi takes it by just 0.14. So Kreiner, certainly not out of this one yet. So a small advantage goes the way of the Japanese athlete, Tomoka Takeuchi. She's carrying the good form that she had in Carreza, where she finished in second. Into this race here in Rogla, Slovenia. So the men's quarterfinals will be up next. Brock Margaret's just, he looks, he looks up for it. Focused, anxious, wanting to get the race started. Lucas Mathis, though, is a tough, tough challenger. Mathis, third in the opening round of the tour. So, 
So Lucas Mathis against Rock Margic. What a nice start for Margic on the blue course, but Mathis is focused here on the red. Doesn't matter what happens out of the gates, what happens across the line that matters. And look at the line that Lucas Mathis is taking here. So dynamic and aggressive. He's generating huge angles. Bending that board and that just ekes out that extra thousands of a second on every single turn. But Margic hanging on and this is going to be very close across the line. Lucas Mathis takes it by eight hundredths of a second. So the Austrian will take a slender advantage through to run number two. Great pictures of Rock Margaret just shifting that mass onto the heel edge. And then they dive for the line. But it's Mathis that takes it. Sylvain Dufour up against Andreas Promegger. Quarterfinal number two. Dufour, silver medalist in World Championship competition in 2009. He's on the blue. Promegger on the red. In horrible, horrible conditions. It is absolutely pouring with rain here. Reminding me of uh, my days on the snow in the highlands of Scotland. I used to do a lot of skiing and snowboarding in these conditions. You get used to it and sometimes you kind of like it in the end, but you wouldn't want to be competing in a World Cup competition in this weather. Dufour looking sublime on the blue course, carving it out nicely, takes a big advantage into run number two. Promega 1.37 back. And Sylvain Dufour Looking strong today. Arcing it out very cleanly. Not phased by the weather. So it's Dufour in the driving seat in quarterfinal number two. Now the all Slovenian quarterfinal three. Zankozir up against Rock Flander. I have to say, Kuzir might be the favourite. Second in the opening round. Kuzir on the blue, Flander on the red. The Slovenians will just keep shouting all the way throughout this race, cheering on their favourites. So, Zan Kuzir. The nearest two is wearing bib 15 on the blue course. Rock Flander on the red. And it's going the way so far of Kuzir. Flander just a little late in the line. Too rounded for my liking here. And no major mistakes from Flander, but Kuzir takes it by over a second, just over a second in the end. And Zan Kuzir in a great position ahead of the second run. Zan Kuzir did finish second in this race last season. Fischnaller the winner. Sylvan Dufour was third last year. First time we raced PGS on this course. So as expected, the Slovenians get a great reception in the finish. And they'll keep cheering because Tim Masnik up next, up against Vic Wild. Vic Wild did represent the USA, but uh, now competing for Russia. It's married to Elena Zavazina, Russian athlete. Vic Wild on the blue, Masnik on the red, and Vic Wild getting airborne in between the turns. Through the fog, you see Masnik pitched onto the 
front of the board. A bit wild. Still in control of this race. Just. Oh, Masnik nearly down, but great recovery from the Slovenian. Vic Wilde just pulling ahead ever so slightly. Vic Wilde takes it by 0.28. And that's the advantage that he's going to take into run two. Got his left hand just gliding over the snow. Helping him with the balance. So the quarterfinals all done. Well, run one is all done. We'll move back to the start for quarterfinal two. Quarterfinal run two for the women. Ina Meshik of Austria up against Anka Carstens. Carstens had all sorts of trouble on the first run. So Meshik will have nearly a second and a half advantage. Meshik on the red course, Carstens on the blue. And Anka Carstens, well, she's going to have to take an awful lot of risk here if she wants to get back into this one. Meshik is off and running, pulling away. Can you spot them? There they are, just coming out of the fog. Meshik still with a huge lead here. She'll know that as well. You can hear where your other competitor is if they're nearby. Oh, and it looks like Carstens is down. Yep, Anka Carstens down and out. So Ina Meshik can now just take her foot off the gas slightly, crosses the line. Ina Meshik into the court, into the semi-finals. Apologies, losing track of where we are. And Anka Carstens crossing the line. Her race is over at the quarterfinal stage. Just very late in the line with a direction change. Bouncing over the rock. Couldn't get on that toe edge. So Ina Meshik through to the semi-finals. And who is she going to be facing? Patricia Kumar or Esther Ledeska? Patricia Kumar with a very healthy advantage going into run two. 0.72 of a second over the young Czech athlete. So Kumar certainly the favourite coming into this one. She's underway. Ledecka's underway as well. And this is one of those sort of dangerous leads. You know you can't relax with 0.72, but you can't take too much risk either. And Kumar still in front, but Ledeck has really closed that gap down to, say, a, perhaps just less than half a second. Kumar still in front, though. There's a lot of work to do for Ledeck. Kumar finding the rhythm. Oh, Kumar's down on the heel edge. Oh, what a surprise. That has opened the door for Ledeck. Who gets handed a place in the semi finals. Patricia Kuma was in control. Oh, that's such a shame. She looks despondent there. Just a few gates from home on the heel edge. And sits down to get that soft snow causing all sorts of problems today. But Ledecka stayed in touch. Didn't let off. So Esther Ledecka up against Ina Meshik in the first of the women's semi-finals. It's Dumovitz now against Selina Jörg. Dumovitz, second and a half ahead. So Selina Jörg with a big, big gap to close here. Dumovitz underway, Jörg underway. Just there tricky thing for the uh, camera people in these conditions as well and also when there's a big gap who do you focus on the head-on shot gives us a good clear 
outside as to who's leading this race, and it's Julia Dumovic, the Austrian well clear, and I think Selina Jörg is out of this one. Yeah, we've lost sight of Jörg, down and out, so Dumovic, she might not know that yet, but no, she does, she's got it, and into semi-final number two, Selina Jörg, the clock, unfortunately for her, is still ticking over. And she does cross the line in the end. So Jörg got back on her feet. Here's Julia Dumovic. Just having to fight the balance and the forces that are in, it, in action. Diving onto that toe edge there. But great riding from Julia Dumovic. So last of the women's quarterfinals, Tomoka Takeuchi of Japan has 0.14 of a second advantage over the 2009 world champion Marian Kreiner of Austria. So Takeuchi has to be full gas here. Kreiner on the red, Takeuchi on the blue, and already that advantage is gone, and I think Kreiner slightly ahead. That's the beauty of this format. It really does come down to the wire after the two runs, and both athletes riding on both courses as well. It's about as fair as it can get. Kreiner running a little wide. Kreiner in trouble. Oh, Kreiner's down, and... Takeuchi is going to, well, if she stays on her feet, of course, take it. And she does take it. Takeuchi rides into the semi-finals. Marion Kreiner gingerly crossing the line. Here's where Kreiner goes down. Just caught in a rut by the looks of things. Can't make that... Clean transition to the new turn. And Tomoka Takeuchi's good season continues. She's in the semi-finals. Whatever happens, all these athletes in the semi-finals get a chance of at least racing for a medal. The winners of the semi-finals, of course, into the big final third. The losers go into the small final to race off for third place. Back to run two now in the men's quarterfinals. Lucas Mathis up against Rock Margot. Mathis on the blue with eight hundredths of a second advantage over Margot. Bouncing in the start gate, just staying loose. The muscles can get cold shivery conditions even though it's plus five degrees at the start of the contest so quarterfinal one underway Lucas Mathis on the blue course Rock Margaret on the red Mathis just sliding out of a turn a little bit but he's holding it together well Margaret very much in this race though but Math is still with the advantage. Not a lot in it though. Bit of a mistake from Margaret. That might just help. Lucas Mathis. And the Austrian takes it by 0.48. Lucas Mathis the winner. He's through to semi-final stage. through that gate almost bringing the whole thing with them it's a bit more work to do for the course crew Lucas Math is the winner so back waiting in the start it's Sylvain Dufour and Andreas Promegger Here's Rock Margaret ripping through the gate, taking the whole thing with him. He 
Ryan's going to sign a few autographs in the finish. It'll be a top eight finish from Argus. So then do four. And there's Andreas Prolmega. So the Austrian on the blue course. That gate that Margaret ripped out just being repaired at the moment. So we get the commands from the starter. Red course ready, blue course ready. Attention, and then the beeps. Dufour with a 1.37 already underway. Now Promega follows him out of the gate. Huge gap to try and overturn, but Dufour... Been there, done it, and knows the tactics of this event in the two-run format. And Sylvain Dufour, for me, in the eight finals, was looking really good. Really strong, really smooth on the turns, and he's carrying that form into the quarterfinals. Sylvain Dufour, by over a second, rides into semi-final number one. So Dufour, who was on the podium here last year, into the semi-finals again. Clearly a hill that he likes. There's Promega having a bit of trouble. Look at the conditions. Fighting through the slush. Dufour the winner. It'll be him up against Lucas Mathis in semi-final one. Two quarter-finals to go, two runs to go. And then the semi-final lineup for the men will be all complete. Rock Flander on the blue course. Zan Kazir on the red. Kazir with a second advantage over his Slovenian teammate. So Kazir on the red course. He was second here last year as well. Eyeing up a place in the semi-finals again. He's built on the advantage and Flanders down. So Kazir is going to take quarter-final number three. The Slovenians get one man into the semi-finals. And they love it as well. The flags are waving. You'll have to trust me. There they are. You can see them better now. Great crowd in, of course, today. Good atmosphere in the finish. It adds to the event. Been to too many events over the years where the crowd's not quite as passionate as they are here. It does mean so much to all the athletes as well. Especially when the weather's like this. Here's the mistake of Flander. But to be fair, it was going to be pretty unlikely that he would progress through to the semi-finals at that stage of the race. Quarter-final number four. Tim Masnick, also of Slovenia, up against Vic Wild. And Vic Wild with point. 2-8 of an advantage. He's on the red course. Masnak on the blue. So Vic Wild with the slight advantage here. And he's held it over the opening three or four turns. But Masnak can see him in front. He's in his eye line. Sometimes that helps the rider just find that extra ounce of energy get a little bit more force through the board on each of the turns to generate a little bit more speed and Masnek still in touch here little mistake from Vic Wild that's brought Masnek back into it and he's on a tight line Masnek might take it here oh by three hundredths of a second oh look at what it means to Tim Masnek the Slovenian fans love it as well. Vic Wild certainly the favourite going into this quarter-final. But Masnak sprung a surprise. There was mistakes in his run as well. But Vic Wild made a couple of small errors himself. And then right on the line. 
so close, but Masnak takes it. So, Tim Masnak overturning 0.28. So the semi-final lineups for the men all confirmed. Lucas Mathis up against Sylvain Dufour, and Tim Masnak up against Zan Kozir in semi-final number two. So whatever happens here today, we are guaranteed one Slovenian man on the podium. Because one of them is going to be in the big final. So looking back up the hill, you see the women's semi-finals up next. Tough weather conditions, tough snow conditions as well. It's thankfully not cold. Five degrees here in Rogla. Beautiful part of the world, you'll have to take my word for it. Slovenia country I do love very much indeed. Spent a bit of time in this part of the world. As the athletes lined up for the first run of the women's semi-finals. Esther Ledechka up against Ina Meshik. And Ledechka knocked out Patricia Kumar in the quarter-finals. Kumar had a big, big lead, but a mistake near the bottom opened the door for Ledechka. And she grabbed that opportunity. Ledechka's never won on the World Cup Tour. So just a few course repairs going on. Making sure everyone is in position ahead of the semi-finals. Two runs, of course, and then we head into the big final. Losers of the semi-finals go into the small final, where they will race off for that final spot on the podium. It's Ledetska against Meshik. Takeuchi against Adumovic. They're ready to go, and it won't be too long now. Ledetska on the blue course. Mashik on the red. The lights are flashing. Run one of the women's semi-finals is underway. Can either of these athletes build a big lead ahead of the second run and make the job of getting into the semi-final that little bit easier but Esk has been uh, looking strong today could Patricia Kuma perhaps could have knocked her out of the race but it ain't over till it's over and it's a big mistake there from Messi she's run very wide oh that's handed a huge opportunity to Esther Ledetska and the Czech athlete crosses the line. It's going to be 1.37 that she takes with her to run two. And they switch courses. So Esther Ledetska hasn't put a foot wrong yet. Ina Mesic, just another athlete that's been caught out by the soft snow. Seeing very little emotion from Ledetska today. She's focused on the task at hand. Takeuchi. Knocked out Marion Kreiner. And now she's got another Austrian challenger, Julia Dumovitz. Takeuchi on blue, Dumovitz on red. So semi final two underway. Run at number one, of course. Takeuchi now just settling into the rhythm of this course. All these athletes have plenty runs on this track now. They know the pattern of gates. They know where the rhythm changes slightly, where it's a little more open, where you can take the risk. And Dumovic just a fraction in front of the Japanese athlete now. 
Dumovitz still with the advantage as we're approaching the, fi the finish line. Dumovitz by eight hundredths of a second. So Takeuchi closed that gap towards the end of the first run. And it's given herself a real chance on that run at number two. So Dumovitz with the advantage, but it's just a small one, eight hundredths of a second. Semi-final lineups for the men, Lucas Mathis against Sylvan Dufour. Zan Kuzir against Tim Masnick. There is Lucas Mathis on the podium in Carreza. He was third there. Hear the wind blowing around as well, just to make it a little bit more challenging, especially for the coaches in the start. Hope someone's taken them out. Coffee, or the smart ones will have taken a flask with them, with some coffee in it, of course. So Dufour, Sylvain Dufour, up against Lucas Mathis. Good start for Sylvain Dufour on the blue course. Lucas Mathis on the red. See Lucas Mathis running, running just a little bit wide, and Sylvan Dufour, for me, looking very strong. It's a big mistake there, but everyone's, we're all still on our feet. And Lucas Mathis takes it by 1.37. So just as I was praising Sylvan Dufour. Big mistake, creeps into the run. Just can't get off that, he's stuck on the heel edge there. But he recovered well to stay on course and it could have been a lot more damage done to the run there. It's gonna to be tough for Dufour on run two, 1.37 back, but he's still just about in it. Zan Kazir and Tim Masnik. Couldn't have played out much better for the Slovenians so far. Masnik on the blue, Kuzir on red. Kuzir's been in the finals here before. And this became a venue on the World Cup Tour last season. I think it's going to be a place we keep coming back to as well. Great hill for parallel giant slalom racing. San Kuzir, the early leader. In the second of the men's semi-finals. Both of these athletes, as I was saying a little earlier, know these snow conditions. They know this hill. They do a bit of training here. Wonderful places to snowboard and ski, if that's your thing, in this part of the world. And across the line, Zankazir takes it by 0.86. Zankazir, just like he did last season, looking strong here. Masnek just gives them a high five. That's Tim Masnack. Didn't do too much wrong in that semi-final. Of course, could all change around and run number two. That's coming up uh, once we've done that run two uh, for the women. Zan Kuzir focused. Now 0.86 ahead of, of Masnack. That's the advantage he'll carry into run at number two. Two Austrian women in the semi-finals, Ina Meshek and Julia Dumovitz. You want to take that jacket off at the last possible moment in this weather. As Ina Meshek just walks up to the start gate. The board might already be there. Well, it'll be with the technician. He'll be getting the brushes on the board, adding a bit more wax as well. Maybe just a light diamond file on the edges. In these conditions, sometimes some stones can make their way to the surface. 
Take a little dink out of the edge. There's Esther Ledesco. A youngster from the Czech Republic. Just getting the boots clear of any snow. The snow can stick to the boots in these conditions. And Ledesco, point. 1.37 ahead of the Austrian. Ina Mesic. Run two of these semi finals. Just a few moments away. Seeing this weather, the gloves get soaking wet as well. I'd probably take a spare pair of gloves with me as well in this weather. Just switch it up in between the heats, maybe. Keep your hands nice and warm. Last thing you want to be doing in the start gate is be thinking about having cold hands. This certainly a cloth for the goggles as well. Can guarantee that Ledecka's not going to have any snow on her boots by the time she clips in. So Meshik on the blue course and the goggles get a wipe. For the red lens, you need as much definition as you can get when it's foggy like this. Ledecka on the red course. Meshik on the blue. Ledecka 1.37. Her advantage from run number one. And she powers out of the start gate already. Up and running on run number two. Ledecka. The sense that Meshik is chasing her down. But it means with this big, big lead that Ledecka's got, Meshik has to take all of the risk. And she's doing it. Oh, she's looks like she's out of the course. So Esther Ledecka is going to ride this one through to the big final. She's never won on the World Cup Tour. And Esther Ledecka gets it done. In the semi-finals, the Czech athlete knocks out Ina Mesic, who'll have to race in the small final. So still a chance of getting on the podium for Esther Ledecka. But it's for Ina Mesic, I should say. Ledecka's guaranteed a spot on the podium. And the Czech athlete... Looking very, very strong in the semi-finals. We now focus on Julia Dumovitz and Tomoka Takeuchi. Dumovitz with eight hundredths of a second advantage over Takeuchi. So we're underway with run number two for the women. Takeuchi against Dumovic. And Dumovic still looking like she's got the advantage. Neck and neck in this second semi-final. Dumovic and Takeuchi. Just a three or four more gates to go. Dumovic, oh, she's in a little bit of trouble. Takeuchi hasn't put a foot wrong, though. And the Japanese rider slightly ahead with two gates to go. Oh, big mistake from Dumovic. Takeuchi takes it. Dumovic with trouble. Just a couple of gates from home. And Takeuchi will go through to the big final. To race against Esther Ledecka. It's been a real breakthrough season for Ledecka. On the podium in parallel slalom. In Badgestein. Just about seven or eight days ago. Double parallel slalom. There. And Takeuchi confirmed as the winner. But... Ledecka never been on the podium in parallel giant slalom. She's never had a World Cup win. Might today be the day that she gets the first win of her career. So 
Second run for the men now. Lucas Mathis and Sylvain Dufour. Mathis will be on the blue course. Dufour on the red. 1.37 the advantage for Lucas Mathis. So Math is underway. Dufour has to chase him down. It's a big, big gap to try and close. If anyone can do it, though, Sylvain Dufour can. But Math is so experienced, so strong in this discipline. Dufour, the athlete that has to take the risk. And it's so difficult to take risk when the snow is like this. If it's a perfect, clear day with cold, hard snow, you can really push it a little more. Sometimes in these in this weather you're hanging on and Lucas Mathis hangs on. He's into the big final. Dufour did close the gap slightly, but not by enough. Mathis takes it by just over a second. Well Mathis did run a fraction wide, but he's in the big final. So just the all Slovenian second semi-final to go. Zan Kuzir and Tim Masnek in semi-final number two. Kuzir with 0.86 of an advantage. So semi-final two underway. Sam Kazir looking to build on that lead he had after run number one. Masnek has just got to throw everything he can at this one. It's a horrible foggy day, but these athletes are giving it 100% as they always do. And Sam Kazir finding a nice rhythm here. Good high early turns. And it's going to be Zan Kazir comfortable in the end. Takes it by 1.41. Zan Kazir into the big final. He'll race against Lucas Mathis. Sylvain Dufour will go against Tim Masnak for third place today. That one, of course, coming up just a little bit later. But the old Slovenian semi-final goes the way of Zan Kuzir. So just the final races to go, the Small finals and big finals to sort out all the podium positions. It'll be the first run of the women's small final up first. Dumovic against Mesic, the all Austrian affair. There's Zan Kazir getting a very warm reception. He knows he's on the podium. Just not quite sure whether it'll be first or second. We know what those fans are hoping for. As we await the uh, athletes to get ready for the small final. Slightly longer gaps between the races, between the heats, of course, now, because athletes have got to get back to the top. Got to give them a second to catch their breath as well. A little bit of work done on the boards. Well, they look pretty... Like they're having a good time. That's what matters. A little wet, if anything, but uh, to be expected today. Plenty to keep everyone entertained in the finish area. Well, if you want to be wearing anything today, I'd have to say the mascot costumes would be quite near the top of the list. It'll be nice and warm in that, probably quite dry as well.
So Yulia Dumovic there just tightening the boots up. We're just a few moments away from the start of the small final run number one. There's Ina Mashik. Mashik will be on the red course here in the first run. Dumovic there on the blue. And then it will be run one of the big final Ledesca against Takeuchi. So we're lined up. Dumovic on the blue. Meshik on the red. First run in the small final. This for third place in today's race here in Rogla, Slovenia. Well, heavy rain, thick fog. Not facing these athletes. Dumovic on the blue course with a slight lead. Very little in it, that's for sure. Oh, it's a big mistake on the red course. Meshik in spot of bother. So Dumovic is going to ride this one down. She's going to take the maximum. 1.46 of an advantage into run number two. And Dumovic is in prime position to grab third place today. Just one more run to go. There was Mesh. She's not quite getting the start right. And there she just gets stuck in the soft snow and comes to a stop. No, she's not going to be able to close that gap down. Come on, Julia Dumovic. So now we get ready for the first run of the women's final. Esther Ledecka of the Czech Republic, 18 years old, on the red course. Takeuchi of Japan on the blue. Ledecka, a couple of podiums just last week in parallel slalom but hasn't done it in parallel giant slalom yet Ledechka on red Takeuchi on blue Takeuchi second last week last week last race in Kareza see Ledechka finding an almost a tuck position staying low trying to be as aerodynamic as possible Takeuchi experienced knows how to handle the pressure of racing in a final. That's something Ledecka is going to have to learn to deal with as her career develops and the form that she's been on. Certainly in parallel slalom, suggesting she can already handle it. Very little between the athletes here in the big final. Takeuchi takes it by nine hundredths of a second. So more work to do on run number two. For Ledechka, but Takeuchi, after second place in the opening round of the PGS Tour, has the smallest amount of advantages going into run two. But Ledechka has come from behind earlier on in this race and knows that nine hundredths of a second is next to nothing, so... All to play for in the women's big final. We'll focus now on the men. Their small final up first. Dufour against Masnek. That's Tim Masnek. Wearing at bib 46 silver. And Dufour, mistake on the first run of his semi-final. Cost him a real chance of trying to get into the big final. But Masnek on blue. Dufour on red. Run number one of the men's small final. So here we go. Masnag, of course, being cheered on by not just the fans, but the course workers as well. But Dufour, tough competitor. He's been riding well, just the one big mistake today. Now Dufour builds a 
advantage, that dynamic riding style. Helping him out here, he's dictating to the course, not being bossed around by the tough conditions. And Dufour building a big lead, and Dufour across the line by 0.5, half a second. So Dufour in prime position. Going into run two. Almost went down, but great powers of recovery from Sylvian Dufour there. So the Frenchman makes, will make his way back to the top, as will Slovenia's Tim Masnek. Just one more race to go for them. So the men's a big final run number one, Lucas Mathis. He's been on the podium three times in parallel giant slalom. Of course, that last podium coming on the 13th of December in Careza. So underway with the men's big final. So Lucas Math is on the blue course. Zan Kuzir. Lucas Math is on the red. Zan Kuzir on the blue. Slight advantage to Zan Kuzir. Oh, but he's run very wide. That's allowing Mathis to get back into this one. So Lucas Math is now with the advantage. On the red course, and Mathis comes across the line, takes it by 0.62. That could have been a little closer for Zan Kazir, but he lost the line. Really had to put the brakes on. Kazir on the blue course here, running wide in the soft snow, getting bounced around. Throws it onto the Tip of the board, the toe of the board. So one run to go in the men's big final and Math is in that pole position ahead of that run. He gets the fresh jacket, the warm jacket. Back in the start gate, Yulia Dumovitz has a big, big lead. The maximum lead you can take into the second run over Ina Meshik. The two Austrians fighting for third place here in Rogla. Do hope for the weather changes fairly soon and we get some more natural snow. Help this part of the world out. Very popular. One of the larger Slovenian winter sports areas. They're just over 13 kilometers of ski slopes and snowboard slopes. 24 kilometers of cross country tracks as well. So, small final. Run at number two, Dumovitz with the big lead going into this second run. Dumovitz will be on the red course. Ina Meshik on the blue. See the wind blowing the gates around. I was a little worried at the start of this contest that the weather might take over and we might have had a few delays, but it's just stayed the right side of the line for this competition to go ahead. Everyone's certainly earned a good meal after this race and a, a well-earned rest. Just competing in these conditions really does take it out of you. Just waiting for the okay from the starter. And then Dumovitz will, of course, be out of the gate first. Okay. 
Small final, second run underway for the women. Dumovic with a huge advantage over Ina Meshik. Dumovic out in front on the red course. Just has to stay focused. Think of the task at hand. You can afford to run a slightly more rounded, safer line with this big advantage, but Ina Meshik is not hanging around here. She wants to get back in contention for third place today, and she really has closed the gap on Dumovic, and now Meshik turns on the afterburners, but it's not enough. Dumovic takes it by 0.63 in the end. So Dumovic scrabs third place today. She'll be on the podium. Meshik will finish in fourth through everything at that race, but 1.46 on quite a short course, just the over 400 meters long, is an eternity. And you really are relying on a mistake from your opponent. But good performances from the two Austrians there, Dumovic on the left of your screen, wearing bib 16. Third place for her today. I think if you offered a third at the start of the race, you'd have taken that in this weather. Now, run to the women's big final. Ledecka, 18 years old, has never won on the World Cup Tour before. Was in a big final in parallel slalom on the 10th of January in Badgestein. Followed that up on the 12th with a third place finish. She was second in that final. Never won, never been on the podium in PGS. But she's got it overhaul. Takeuchi of Japan. Ledetska on the blue course. Takeuchi on the red. And Ledetska, I think, has built an advantage here. So the good work done from the Japanese athlete on run one is gone. And Ledetska in with a great chance. Jack Affley is side by side with Takeuchi. And as we're approaching the final few turns, Takeuchi makes a big mistake. Oh, she's out of it. And Ledechka is going to come through the final few turns and grab her first win in her World Cup career. Esther Ledechka of the Czech Republic at just 18 years old wins here in Rogla. What a performance from the youngster. Takeuchi just getting bounced around in the ruts. Couldn't hold on. She was in touch until that point. But Ledecka, now she smiles. She's been so focused, so calm all day long. And the snowboard racing world has got a new star. What will Ledecka go on to achieve in her career? Fantastic racing today. So the second run of the small final for the men lined up in the start gate. Sylvain Dufour of France on the blue has a half a second advantage over Tim Masnak of Slovenia on the red. Dufour third here last year. On course to repeat that performance unless Tim Masnak can pull something out of the bag here. The rain on the camera lens, it hasn't let up all day long. And Dufour is steaming away, trying to build a bigger lead. But Masnek is hanging around. The gap hasn't got too much bigger. Dufour carving nicely from turn to turn. There's the first mistake from Dufour. Hands down, a slight stumble. But there's not much racetrack left. Sylvain Dufour of France. Rides across the line, takes it by 0.62. He finishes in third today. Repeating that performance of 12 months ago, Masnak has to settle for fourth. Just one big error in the run from Sylvain Dufour, but he's a strong, powerful athlete. He 
kept themselves upright. Yes, man. Don't go out with this big. That's good. Yeah, for sure. Maybe that's your place for our touch, you know? Yeah. Huh? Good. Men's big final run number two. Zan Kazir on the red course, point six two behind the Austrian Lucas Mathis. Lucas Mathis is never won on the World Cup tour. Been on the podium four times in his career. Zan Kazir has got point six two to make up. And Lucas Mathis, the nearest to us on screen, settling nicely. Finding a good rhythm, Mathis. Still out in front, Zan Kazir. Trying to close the gap. It's not working, Lucas Mathis still in control of this one. Big mistake from Mathis. He's pitched forward, it's got a lot closer. Oh, Kazir's out. Mathis takes it. Lucas Mathis of Austria wins here in Rogla. Dumovic comes across to congratulate him. Ina Meshik is there as well. It got so close on that second run, but Kazir not able to stay on the line. Clatters right through the flag, and that will be a disqualification on that run. So Kazir has to, finish, has to make do with second place. Just like he did one year ago. It was Fischnaller that won a year ago. It's Mathis who wins today. And what a performance from the Austrian Lucas Mathis. So the final standings. Ledeska picks up the 1,000 points for winning for the first time in her career. Takeuchi second today. The second race in a row. And snowboard racing certainly has a new superstar in the making in Esther Ledecka. What a performance today. She didn't make it easy for herself. Had to come from behind in a few of her heats. As we've just seen, Matthews picks up 1,000 points. He'll move to the top of the parallel giant slalom standings. We'll be in a tie, actually, with Zan Kazir. But great riding that from Mathis today, of course. Picking up his first World Cup win. So there's the start gate. We're all finished with the racing. And I think everyone will be pretty pleased <laughs> about that. Certainly those that have been working very hard in the start. The coaches, the physios, the service men and women. And of course all the team putting on the race, the starters. Someone doing a provisional timing board, showing all the heats as well. Thankfully, they were under a little bit of cover. Great job by the organising team here in Rogla. Look at the current parallel giant slalom standings. Takeuchi, by virtue of her two second place finishes this season, 
leads by 200 points over Patricia Kuma, but Esther Ledecka now up in a tie for second. And there's just one race to go in the PGS World Cup Tour. That race on the 1st of February in Sudelfeld in Germany. Of course, there's a fairly big event coming up. Uh, just a few weeks time as well, the 2014 Winter Olympic Games, Sochi, Russia, Mathis and Kuzir, the two finalists from today's race, tied at the top on 1600 points, Unterkofler, the winner of the first round of the World Cup Tour in third, not making it through to finals today, so it'll be a battle between Mathis and Kuzir, when we head to Sudelfeld in a few weeks time Let's see who can pick up the most points out of those two maybe Unterkoffler will find a bit of form there and get back on the uh, top step of the podium well that's what we were playing for today lovely trophies I do like it when the trophies are a little bit more unique and always look good on the on the mantelpiece don't they lovely uh, trophies that will be handed out here in Rogla, we'll stick around for the prize giving ceremony. Always nice, many of the fans staying around as well. As I've been saying, great atmosphere all day long. And with uh, Zan Kuzir finishing in second, the Slovenian fans will be sure to stick around and give him a big shout out when he steps onto the podium. And they're already making a lot of noise for him as well. There is the uh, podium, the relevant dignitaries start getting lined up and the athletes will just be well, drying off slightly. Not often you have to take a towel with you to a snowboard race, but that's certainly, when you looked at the weather forecast this morning, that's certainly what I've been doing. And the organising committee here in Roglup did a great job last season. With this event, good to see it back on the World Cup Tour again. I'm sure it'll be somewhere that becomes a regular stop. It was nice to take it somewhere where the host nation have got some some strength. There's passionate fans as well. It's a good hill for racing. Not too steep. Doesn't have any real long flat sections either. So it means it's uh, racing from start to finish. And it's pretty level as well. So fair on both courses, a good media crew in today as well. And so the coach is just milling around in the finish area as well. Hard day's work for the coaches in very horrid weather. Well, 12 months ago, it was Roland Fischnaller on the top step of the podium. The second went to Kuzir, third went to Dufour. That's the same as this year. Completely different podium in the women's event from 12 months ago to Kutsheva, the winner. Sayerbridge of the Netherlands second last year. Claudia Riegler third. It's Dumovic, Takeuchi and Ledeska. Today though, there's Takeuchi wearing bib seven. And all three athletes, Dumovic on the left of your screen, Ledeska on the right. It's all smiles, they can relax now. Everyone's pleased to get this contest completed. And we'll just be a few moments away from the podium at celebrations and what a moment it'll be for Esther Ledecka first time in her career she's been on the top step of the podium and she will be absolutely delighted doing well to keep the emotions in check but I'm sure inside she will be absolutely on top of the world of course as I was saying just the one race to go this season in parallel GS that's in Sudelfeld 
on the 1st of February. And then it's off to Russia for the Winter Olympic Games. All the athletes will be hoping to get the ceremony underway fairly quickly. Been uh, waiting around a lot in the pretty rough weather conditions today, so they'll be wanting to get into the dry weather by insight <laughs> as quick as possible. Many of the teams will head home today, they won't uh, stick around. Some will stay around one more night and travel tomorrow. So Ina Meshik of Austria finished in fourth place today. She was in a real battle in that semi-final with Lodecka. But uh, couldn't hold off the Czech athlete. And she gets the flowers. Unfortunately doesn't get to stand on the podium. Has to stand next to it. But gets the giant check for 1,500 Swiss francs. Not bad for her day's work. Third place today. Also from Austria, Julia Dumovitz. Defeated her teammate Meshik to get that third spot on the podium. We'll get the flowers. And then the... Uh, Trophy for third place and hopefully a giant check as well. Everybody likes a giant check. 3,125 Swiss francs go the way of Dumovitz. Second place today, just like she was back in December in Carreza. Tomoka Takeuchi makes her way onto the podium. Very consistent riding from the Japanese athlete this season. She'd love to just go one a better than she's managed so far this season. Get on that top step, but a check for just over, just under 6,000 Swiss francs. 5,875 go the way of Takeuchi of Japan. And Esther Ledeska, today's winner, makes her way over to the podium, shakes hands with everyone. On the top step for the first time in her career. Big step up, she can't quite make it. Someone will have to give her a hand. Uh, use third place to get onto the top step and Ledetska with a winner on the World Cup Tour for the first time in her career what will she go on to achieve well, we look forward to finding out fantastic performance today from the young Czech athlete she's pleased to see the number on the check that's for sure be the uh, biggest check of her career and the desk up lifts the trophy aloft and the one two three the desk attack it she Dumovitz all delighted with their day's work in about as tough a conditions as it gets on the World Cup tour there'll just be a few photographs taken I think and then We'll move on to the men's podium at celebrations.
So the Czech national anthem plays out for Esther Ledecka. He nearly ran away before the anthem was played, but making it back just in time. And a lovely scene there for Esther Ledecka. Not wipe that smile off her face. It'll be back to World Cup competition in Sudelfeld for the Dechka. And in the Winter Olympic Games as well. Well, she certainly announced herself ahead of Sochi 2014. So it'll be, it will be the men's podium at celebrations now. And it'll be nice to see uh, two Slovenians making their way to the podium in just a few moments' time. Zan Kazir getting into position. Tim Masnik on the right of your screen in the white jacket finished in fourth today. And he's pretty happy with that. He, of course, would have loved to have gone at least one better. But a fantastic performance from Tim Masnik. Especially on home snow. Masnik would have been hoping to go well. And he's done that, that's for sure. So, Tim Masnik finishing in fourth place. <laughs> so, Van Dufour, third last year. Third again. Shakes hands with Tim Masnik. He's got a career best result here today. Uh, Dufour will quite enjoy these trips to Rogla if he keeps ending up on the podium gets the check for 3,125 Swiss francs second place today from Slovenia this will be the loudest cheer of the day I think it's Zan Kozir on the podium again on home snow. Very popular podium here indeed. So Kazir smiles with the cameras. Quite a few Slovenian press in attendance today, so this will be on the back pages of the Slovenian newspapers. Of course, it's a nation that absolutely loves its winter sports. Getting his first career win, Lucas Matis carried aloft to the top step of the podium. Wonderful scenes here. And that's the way to get delivered onto the top step. So Lucas Math is now in a tie at the top of the tour standings with Zan Kozir. They're both on 1,600 points with just that one race to go. Almost a 600 point lead over Unterkofler in third place. So the check for it's just over 11,000 Swiss francs goes the way of Lucas Matis of Austria. And in a moment's time, we'll have the Austrian national anthem.
A day that will live long in the memory of Lucas Matthews, his first career win in a parallel giant slalom. What a performance. What a show he's put on today. Fantastic riding from the young Austrian. And many Austrian fans making the short drive over the border to Rogla to cheer on the whole Austrian team. Going to be fairly happy with their day's work. Winner in the men's event and third and fourth in the women's event. Zan Kuzir just spent some time thanking the fans. They've been cheering all the Slovenian athletes on. And to be fair, every athlete. The Slovenians have been getting just a little bit more noise, as you'd expect, on home snow. It's been a great atmosphere in the finish here in Rogla. It's been a lot of fun, this competition. Very tough weather conditions it's one way to keep warm foggy race about as foggy as it gets a lot of rain a lot of wind as well but Esther Ledecka at 18 years old gets her first career win Lucas Matis his first in the men's event from myself Ian Findlay thank you so much for your company we'll see you again very soon